So on Tuesday, we worked with JavaScript as a way to create interactivity in our project. Uh, now we're going to uh, use a JavaScript library to help us create interfaces a lot easier. So we're going to use something called jQuery Mobile. Now you might have heard of jQuery. Uh, this is somewhat related to it, jQuery Mobile. And this is a way for us to create an interface of a mobile or app project very quickly. So the thing is that I often see that when people learn uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they want to create projects. Every time they create a project, they want to create it from scratch with an empty document, rolling up our sleeves, blood, sweat, and tears, create a project from zero every single time. And that's great in the beginning. Uh, but then when you actually have a lot to do and you have deadlines and all of that, starting from the beginning every time isn't going to be helpful. Plus, you would have to manually program all aspects of it. So there are many libraries out there which are sort of like starting points, sort of like templates, sort of like shortcuts for us to start to create a project. Case in point, uh, interface. Uh, I want to write code to create a project that looks good on a mobile device and oftentimes uh, in, a, in this form factor of a mobile device we have some sort of top area, header area, where we might have a logo or navigation buttons. We might have a center main content area for content that the user interacts with. There might be a sort of a footer area. So there's oftentimes a division of the three main areas of the document. And um, in order to program that, to set that up via HTML or CSS, it takes a lot of effort. So there's a library, jQuery Mobile, that will let us create that kind of very basic template quickly. We will, of course, be able to fully customize it, change the colors, the alignment, icons, all of that. But a starting point for an interface where then we put in our interactivity, our custom colors, our, our content, and such. So we're going to start with jQuery Mobile today as a way to create an interface. Let's get a copy of the template file from the network folder. Again, you could write those 10 or 13 lines of basic code on your own, but I've got a little template for us to get started with. So if you go back to the classroom data, MAD1, I have template. Copy template to your flash drive, rename it to today's date. We'll open it up and we'll start using that template file as our starting point for today's code. So 2018-02-08. Remember, you can right-click. When you've got a copy of the code, you can right-click it, edit with Notepad++, or you can open Notepad, and then File Open, and then Open My File. Uh, don't open, uh, d don't edit, don't right click the file in the network folder. The network folder is locked. I see this happen um, for a lot of people in the beginning. Uh, all of the files that I give you in the network folder are locked. If you try to edit one of these files and try to save, it'll say it's locked. And people get confused about that in the beginning that I thought I made a copy, and I'm trying to save it. I'm trying to do save as. It doesn't let me. Well, you're trying to do save as into my network folder, drive Z. You need to be saving into your flash drive, drive F or G, whatever it is. So I've got the basic 18 lines HTML code in Notepad. Again, you can, you can type this all yourself from scratch. We've got a template already. So I'm going to go on. This um, very basic template has the HTML, the head, the body, meta tag, title, h1, and a comment block. That's fine as a very simple starting point here. So line 6, let's change the title to say basic jQuery mobile. For this H1, let's just write again, also jQuery mobile. So this is the copy of, um, of today's work, where we're going to continue it from here. OK, 
Okay, so ultimately we're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, common web languages, to eventually get to the point where uh, we will convert or sort of upgrade a common website into a more complex mobile project, a project that is a full, um, you know, a full app that you can get from the from the app stores. Well we can start to upgrade this uh, basic HTML project by adding uh, a few lines of code here. So this assumes it's going to be a web project. It doesn't quite know that it's going to be eventually on a mobile device. So we're going to add a meta tag that uh, is one of the steps to upgrade this project to be mobile friendly or to work on a uh, mobile device. So right after the first meta tag there, line 6, let's add a new meta tag. So remember, meta does not have uh, a closing tag. <coughs> it has the opening tag only, but it has attributes. Attribute of name, attribute of content. So we're going to write a meta tag. A meta tag is something beyond um, the basic aspect of the coding. Uh, its attribute here of name, this will be viewport. Now the viewport is the main visible area in a web browser. JavaScript may see it as the document object. In HTML, we can refer to it as the viewport, the, the main visible area in the web browser, excluding the back button, the address bar, the status bar, the main viewable area of the web browser. So did that run out there? So we're going to affect the viewport. Content, this is how are we going to affect it. Uh, we're going to say in quotes initial dash scale equals one. Have you ever visited a website on your mobile device and everything is a little too small? You have to zoom in. The text is tiny, you, you can't see it, you have to zoom in to the website. Well, initial scale is setting the initial zoom, so to speak. It is saying, let's make the content in the main visible area 1, 100%. You just write a 1, not 100, you write a 1. So this is saying, the content in the viewport will be automatically zoomed in 100%, basically. We're going to say comma, space. I'm still within the quotes. We're then going to say user-scalable. Scalable equals no. When you visit a plain old website, as I said, on your browser, on the phone, you may have to zoom in. OK, well, the designer didn't do a good job. It should have automatically been zoomed in to know that it's on a mobile device. OK, number two. When you're on a real app like Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you can't zoom in. You can't zoom in to the Facebook icon to see it pixel by pixel. You can't zoom in to the Instagram button to share a photo. You can zoom into photos themselves and that kind of content. But you cannot zoom in to the interface of a real app. It's perfectly designed to fit to the size of your device, isn't it? So here we're saying you're just scalable. No, don't let the person zoom in. That's going to break the illusion. It is starting off as a plain old website, but it's going to then behave like a real app and we don't need to break the illusion that it started off as a website because we'll not let the person zoom in or zoom out. It should already be 100% onto the person's screen. It should not then let the person zoom in or zoom out. Comma, one more item here. With, so W-I-D-T-H, with is equal to device dash with. This again serves to stretch out the content of the viewport 
uh, so that it fills the content of the website so that it fills the viewport and thinking in terms that eventually it'll be on a mobile device zoom in the text and such so that it's 100 percent visible don't let the person zoom in and out to break the illusion and stretch out the size of the project to be the width of the device so when a person sees my project either when it's an app or a website it stretches out to be the size of the device if you go sideways it's gonna stretch out to fill sideways so our note that we can add here is mobile friendly meta tag aka responsive you might hear that term a lot responsive web design is, is the site responsive that's basically that it responds to the size of the device the size of the device, the size of the screen. If it's a laptop screen, a tablet screen, a mobile phone screen, a big projector, responsive. Does it change the size? Does it respond to the size and change? So with this meta tag, we're affecting the content in the viewport to grow, to not be zoomable, to fill up all of the space possible. We're going to want this pretty much always moving forward. This is going to be a very good line of code to have here on future projects because ultimately we want to have a responsive project, a responsive app that will grow and shrink to the size of the person's device. Next, we're going to add three lines of code that will activate jQuery Mobile jQuery Mobile, as I said, this is a library that gives us sort of shortcuts, ways to quickly create an interface. And JavaScript is all of the interactivity code. jQuery, we'll get to that eventually, is shortcuts to write JavaScript a lot easier. And it, I, I think they kind of named this a little weird. jQuery Mobile makes it sound like it focuses all on JavaScript. But actually, it focuses all on HTML. We're basically going to write HTML, but behind the scenes, jQuery Mobile is sort of going to take what we wrote in HTML and sort of convert it via JavaScript to, be, uh, to create a cool interface. So the big idea with jQuery Mobile is this will be a, a way to quickly create a mobile-friendly interface. We cannot start writing jQuery Mobile code until we connect to the jQuery libraries, the jQuery files. So our first line up here, link tag. Let's say note connect to the jQuery Mobile library to access its features. Very quickly we will see the value of this as we write a little bit more because this is kind of a lot of shortcuts. This is kind of a, a lot of um, like templates to get started with. And right now I'm kind of keeping it a little murky, but as we start to use it we will see all of the capabilities. So we need to link to a file. A link tag needs two attributes, rel and href. So the purpose of the link tag is basically to link to a CSS file. I'm going to make further the comment over here. Connect to the jQuery Mobile Library to access its features. Uh, connect to a specific uh, CSS file. <coughs> Link is used to connect to a specific CSS file. The link tag lets us connect to external CSS files. 
jQuery is a is a project is an, is an open source project that people from all over the world work on to contribute to improve to fix bugs and they put it out there free for everyone to use no royalties no licenses and such really you just have to know how to use it read the documentation which we will later but we can connect to this special job uh, this special CSS file to access the features of jQuery mobile so first of all link rel style sheet the relationship between our current file and the file we're going to link to is that we're about to link to a style sheet and when I was talking about during the first few days that there's three ways to link or to write CSS or JavaScript there was inline embedded external inline CSS or JavaScript is that we write the code directly on a line uh, of code which is the worst way then the second best way is embedded in that we create a style block for CSS or a script block for JavaScript and often the best way to do it instead is to link to an external file so don't write don't write this, but if I had mycolors.css, if all of the colors and design of my project were saved in a file called mycolors.css, this is how I would link my HTML file to the CSS file. So we're going to need something like this, but what we can do is also connect to a file that's on the internet. Later on, we will download it and integrate it into our project, but from uh, at the beginning here we'll just connect to the online version so this is going to be a long address uh, but uh, I'll type it out slowly and I'll repeat it HTTP colon slash slash so we're going to connect to the internet code dot jQuery dot com so we're going to connect to the jQuery home page the code subdomain slash mobile slash 1.4.5 slash jQuery dot mobile dash 1.4.5 dot min dot CSS obviously typing it by hand one time is annoying but we will be able to copy and paste this if it works future times and then it's easy but the idea is we're gonna connect to a style sheet on the internet at the jQuery homepage in their mobile directory version 145, the latest version, specifically a file. Notice how it ultimately ends in .css. So we could go off to the web browser and connect to this file and look at the raw code. I wouldn't recommend it. It's like 5,000 lines of gibberish. It's a black box. It's basically, I'm going to connect to this file and use it. I don't need to know how it works. Most of us, I don't know how my car works when I know how to drive it. When something goes wrong, I take it to the mechanic or to my friend that knows cars. But I just use it. And some of us that do know how a car works, great, we'll change our own oil, we'll rebuild our own engine. Fun. But with jQuery Mobile, uh, and many of these libraries, jQuery Mobile, React, uh, Onsen, etc., uh, etc., et I can name a bunch of them, all of these projects, all of these libraries, we simply need to connect to them then we can start using them. We, of course, would read the documentation. How does it work? What, what can I do? What can't I do? And then we start using it. Confirm your spelling here. It's very important that this is spelled properly, of course. This is a 1.45 jQuery.mobile-1.45.min.css. So we're connecting to the minified, compressed, um, optimized version of the code, the minified version of the code. It speeds up our project. So this line, the purpose of it is to connect to a CSS file that will now give us shortcuts in using jQuery Mobile to create an interface. We need two more lines. We connect to one CSS file and then we connect to two JavaScript files. 
to connect to a JavaScript file. It's a little different syntax. We're going to scroll down here before our comment block. We'll write a script tag, which has a pair. Last time we wrote, we wrote JavaScript, we, you know, we separated the lines, we wrote JavaScript. Well, we're not going to separate the lines. We need the opening and, <coughs> and closing tags, script. And normally, I would write embedded JavaScript between these two tags. The funny thing is that we need to write the syntax to connect to the online library of jQuery Mobile. Comment. Connect to the online jQuery Mobile library. Online jQuery Mobile JavaScript library. this syntax to connect to the file do not write more JavaScript between the tags it's sort of either or either we use the tag to write our custom embedded JavaScript between the lines or we use the tags to connect to an online JavaScript library. We should not use them for both purposes. We need an attribute here, src. It's going to be another long line, similar to the one at the top, but a little different. So http colon slash slash code dot jquery dot com slash jquery dash one dot eleven dot min dot js jquery is a library full of many shortcuts to write javascript and a lot of projects uh, are built on top of it. jQuery is very, very, very popular. It's a very popular way to enhance a website. With jQuery, uh, you can. their motto is, write less, do more. When we were writing our code last time for the input-output stuff, uh, we, we wrote document.getElementById, etc. Well, with jQuery, we can condense all of that document.getElementById document command very simply into a dollar symbol. Document.getElementById can be compressed down to one dollar symbol. Now, you'd never know that unless you read the jQuery documentation or you learn it in a class. But the point is that with jQuery, we write less, we do more. Uh, we write shortcuts that let us do more. And jQuery Mobile is built on top of it. So we need to first say, let's access the jQuery code, and then we'll access the jQuery Mobile code. So I need another line that looks the same. Another script pair with a source. I'm going to copy my line at the top there exactly as is, but I need to change it to .js. So up here, we're connecting to code, jQuery, blah, 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 dot CSS. A little shortcut is if you copy all of that except the dot CSS, I'm going to copy that, except dot CSS, paste it into source, and end it with dot JS. First line here, connecting <coughs> to the main jQuery library. Next, next line, then connecting to the jQuery mobile library. Make sure it's .min.js. Save it and run it. And then in your browser, press F12, just to confirm that there's no errors. Because when we start to deal with JavaScript and such, 
F12 in the developer's console is a great way for us to start to troubleshoot our errors. If it says cannot find file, double check your spelling. Let me check mine. I'm going to run this in Firefox. Press F12. My console I'm missing one little thing here. Sorry, I missed this. Too many dots here. Uh, if you're on line 20 or so, where I connected to the jQuery library, it's 1.11.1.min. We, we missed an extra dot one right there. So when I ran it in Firefox, I got some errors. And the error is trying to say, I can't find the file jQuery-1.11. Well, it's actually jQuery-1.11.1. I forgot that extra dot. So if I run that again, F12, console, no, no errors on console. When I had my error a moment ago, it, it looked like this. It said, loading failed for this source. And then I saw, oh, I'm missing a number right there. So then something else says, type error undefined. Well, one error builds on another error. So a moment ago, it looked like that. And now that it's correct, there's no feedback. Now let's pause here. Obviously, we need to make sure this works we, before we go on. But let me, let me mention one thing. If um, if this is not properly set up, what's going to happen is it's going to look different than you expect. Uh, watch watch this a moment. Um, this is a version of the project where I completely disconnected the three libraries. Then, if I write them properly, it'll look like this. You see how the font looks a little different. The font without jQuery properly set up looks like the classic Times New Roman serif font. The background is pure white. When it's fully set up properly, the font will change to an Arial, a simpler kind of a font, and the background is a little bit of an off gray. So if it doesn't look exactly like that, something's wrong. Look at this one over here. It did change the font, but the background's still pure white. That's when I had the error that I didn't connect to one of the files properly. When you connect to the files properly, it'll look like that. Yes, this is going to be all the way to the very edge. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But if it looks like this, and notice it's not pure black here either. It's a slightly off black. Charcoal, maybe. So when it doesn't work completely, pure black text, pure, black, pure white background, times font. When it works properly completely, grayish background, blackish text, and the font is a little different. So let's pause there. If it doesn't look like this, let's make sure it works. Raise your hand, call me over, make sure your code works. Because if this doesn't work, nothing else will work. Let me try to zoom in on the code a little bit. It is a lot of code to write, and I'll be right there.
right, so uh, this step right here sets up the basic foundation for us to start to use jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is a way for us to quickly create an interface. So we are going to create a multi-screen project. We are going to have an app that has a login screen. When you log in, it'll take you to a home screen. When you say add comic, it'll take you to another screen. When it says, you know, view comic, another screen. Well, obvious. Every, everything's multi-screen. But what's going to be different here is all of those different screens are going to exist in one file. There's a couple of ways that we can make a web project or an app in that it is multi-file or single file. They both have their pros and cons. So let's say traditionally I have a file. Right now it's obviously named today's date. But let's say I have a file called login.html. So all the stuff about logging in is on that screen. Then when the person clicks login, the JavaScript kicks in, checks the password, takes them to welcome. Takes them to welcome.html. Then all the stuff regarding welcome screen is there. And then if I want to save a comic, which entails typing its name, scanning its photo, whatever, I click the button and it takes me to savecomic.html. So that's one way to do things, where every screen of the project is its own file. We're going to do it in a way that all of those screens exist in one file. So within this one file, we can jump to the different purposes, the different screens in one file. I'll talk about the pros and cons of both of those approaches a little bit later. But we've got ourselves set up in a way that we can create these multi-screens in one file by virtue of jQuery Mobile. So here's how we'll do this. Inside the body, before the first h1, you know, let's actually just completely remove that. That was just a little placeholder there. Let's remove that uh, h1. It's going to get in our way. Uh, and this actually reminded me of something. When I deleted it, I accidentally also did this. Have any of you experienced that you get a cursor that looks a little different than before? That's the insertion cursor um, that has changed to overwrite mode. Uh, it's supposed to be on this normal insertion mode. So if you're in the wrong mode, what happens is when you're in insertion mode and you type, whatever you type is going to overwrite what's there. When you're in the normal mode, whatever you type here should push over what's over. Well, that's very easy to accidentally change your mode. And it also tells you down on the bottom right, I'm in insertion mode. If you're in the wrong mode, that's because on the keyboard, you accidentally pressed the insert key, which is next to the delete key. So try that for a moment. Press the insert key, and you will see that that changes to that underscore blinking. And you will see down here, you're in overtype mode. So if you accidentally are suddenly typing all over yourself and erasing what you've typed, uh, it's easy to accidentally activate insertion mode uh, and go to the wrong mode. So make sure it's in the regular insertion mode, the vertical blinking line, not the underscore blinking line. Okay, so in order for us to have different screens, they're going to be divided up into different sections. We have a tag called section which has a pair. We want to create a screen full of content. We create a section. Let's say we'll create two at the moment. Use the HTML5 uh, section tag to create different screens in our single page app, SPA. Our SPA, single page app, is a project that all of the different screens of the project exist in one file. Multi-page app, then, is the opposite, is what I said earlier. Home.html is one screen. Contact.html is another screen. Savecomic.html is another. So that would be a multi-page app, which you might have experience with in other classes. We're going to set up a single-page app this way simply by dividing them into sections. And technically, 
these are HTML5 tags. I mentioned specifically HTML5 if you've taken other classes and you know a little bit about the history of HTML. HTML5 is the latest version of the standard. Several years ago, of course, HTML4 was the standard. We're using the latest standard, HTML5. So just to see something, we'll write here now, we'll write h1, page 1. And then on the second section, page 2, just so that we can see something in those different screens. All of this is in body, before the end of body, before our jQuery and other scripts. We're saying, let's create a section where this screen will be full of this content, and this section will be full of that content. Right now, it's super basic. It'll just say page 1, page 2. But obviously, what can be inside of section is every valid HTML. An image, a video, columns, drop-down buttons, forms, everything that is valid HTML will exist in a section. If you save it and run it, H1. If you save it and run it, anticlimactic. I thought I was going to look at page 1 <coughs> and page 2. Well, we're almost there. As I said, this is only HTML5 code. Uh, most of the time, these tags, they don't have any, um, any extra meaning than the built-in inherent meaning of the specification. Uh, so we need to, uh, via jQuery Mobile, then sort of upgrade these so that, OK, make them behave like a section that is separate from another. Right now, we've only marked the stuff in this first block is page 1, and the stuff in the second block is page 2. But we haven't told it what that should look like is screenfuls of content. Let's back up to our first section, and we'll add an attribute. Data-roll equals page. Now save it and run it. So a new attribute to the section tag, as usual, to the opening tag, not the closing one. Opening section tag, new attribute data, dash roll equals quotes page. Save it and run it. And what should happen here then is only the content of page 1 appears. A moment ago, we saw that the content of page 2 does exist. But because we've added a data role attribute, now we are separating the content of one section versus the content of another. So our comment here via HTML5 data role and page jQuery mobile attribute. We've separated, separated, se separated. We've separated content screen from screen. Oops, there it is. So data dash role will make data dash attribute will make more sense later. But very quickly, we can see data dash role. We have other kinds, not just data role. We have data transition for animation. Um, what else? Data. Um, we've got other ones. But data dash something is an, is an HTML5 attribute. Specifically, data role and page is jQuery mobile. And its purpose is to, behind the scenes, somehow, it is separating the content of page 1 and page 2. In order for us to do that ourselves, we'd have to write probably hundreds, or at least very uh, the minimum dozens of lines of code to do that ourselves. Again, the starting point here is that it um, does it very quickly by knowing data role. <coughs> and we would know this, of course, by looking it up on jQueryMobile.com, which we'll look at later, or learning it in a class. Let's, inside of this data role, page 1, let's say I want to set this as the top 
header area of this screen. I want uh, a top header area of content, a main content, a bottom content. The top area of content then, let's wrap the header tag around that page one. So we can note here, top header area. This will be at the top of the screen using header, the header tag is used to delineate this is stuff at the top. After header, we'll write article. And right here, main content. And then a bottom area, footer. I'm skipping H3 for the moment. I'll get back to that in a moment. H1, H2, H4, header, article, footer. Very, very basic way to start to separate the different areas of a screen. Up in the header area, I probably have the title of the app plus a nav bar. We'll be able to see we can make cool navigation bars quickly. Then in the main area, it's the article. Then on the bottom is the footer. So like the top and the bottom of a sandwich, so the top header, the bottom footer, what's sandwiched in between is article. So we can note here. <clears throat> Area in between the top and bottom. And then of course footer area at the bottom of the screen. A screen full of content is defined with section. We then parcel out the main, the, the section with header, article, and footer, and other things that we'll learn. Save it and run it to see the result. Save it and run it to be disappointed again, because it doesn't quite look like it's fully at the top, and that's not at the bottom, and it doesn't quite look there. Well, just like we had to upgrade section with a data role to fully make it behave like a screen full of content, we have to upgrade header, article, and footer so that it behaves more and looks more like a top header area, like a bottom footer area. So we back up to header and we add data role, attribute, header. On footer, we add data role attribute footer. Articles a little a little different. Um, this is one as a beginner definitely you'll forget, but you'll need to uh, practice this one because a lot of them make sense. Uh, but this one uh, this one's kind of weird the first time you see it. This one is role, not data role, just role, main, and then another attribute, class, UI-content. Now when you save it and run it, you're going to start to see jQuery Mobile kick in via these data roles. These are shortcuts that behind the scenes data role is a is a is a is a nickname or a shortcut for something and behind the scenes that those uh, external files kick in and process it and say okay this is a header so we gotta put it at the top this is a footer we'll automatically put it at the bottom we'll change the font we'll do alignments all of that stuff so we could of course do all of that with writing our own hand coded CSS and JavaScript and so forth, hundreds of lines of code, usually. So by using some of these shortcuts and these libraries, 
we get something a little bit more like this, that now I see a top area centered, a main content area, a footer area. Now, of course, I would want the footer to be actually at the foot. One more attribute. Footer, data roll footer, data position, fixed. And that will affix it down to the bottom of the screen, no matter the size of the browser. And what you should do when you run this, change the size of your browser. If you have it completely maximized, it should work fine. And then as you resize your browser to different sizes, you should see it grows and shrinks. And to kind of test this as a, as a mobile device, what about resizing your browser so that it's tall and thin like a mobile device? So like this, if you, if you push and pull your web browser, something <coughs> like tall and thin, something like that. Let's pause right here. All of this um, is a mixture. Well, technically, it's all just HTML. But behind the scenes, because we've used data roles and those sorts of things, jQuery Mobile then kicks in and says, OK, wherever there's a header, at, uh, header tag inside of a section tag with a data role attribute of header, let's do this. Let's center it. Let's do a simple dividing line. Let's put it at the top. And wherever we see any footer inside of a section with a data roll of footer, let's put it at the bottom of the screen with data position as well and center the content. <coughs> and so very basically, we have this, which of course we'll be able to change and, and uh, set our own colors and all of that. But at the moment, it should at, very, at the very least look like this. And when we started off, you know, it was, it was very simple like that. And then at this point now, we're starting to create this interface where we've got a top area, main content area, footer area. Let's, let's look at it like this. And let's actually do our first break here. It's 7 o'clock. So let's make sure that your code works correctly up to this point, like mine. If it looks weird, if it doesn't look like that, call me over. We'll do a break from 7 to 7.10. Seven, uh, make sure your code looks something like this. And here's my code so far. <laughs>